Hello everyone, my name is Ahanaf and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can host a Minecraft server using Docker. So you all know what Docker is and why it's really cool, but if you don't know, let me explain. So Docker is a containerization environment and basically just allows you to run your servers or applications isolated from any like from everything else in its own containerized environment with its own set of dependencies that actually uh, it's like a really really important part of DevOps and stuff so anyways like I'm not gonna talk about docker now um, I'm going to leave a link in the description below about why docker is awesome and why you should use it and you can check that out so let's get started with hosting a Minecraft server from scratch using docker now if you want to host your minecraft server on docker there are actually a few docker images like available in the internet which are kind of like plug and play you just like set up the you just you know download that docker image and just specify what version of the server you want to use and you just run the container that's basically it like those images do everything for you but in this video i want to show you how you can set up something like that from scratch now let's get started with a docker compose so in the docker compose i want to specify a, a service so right now let's just specify a version and then we can have services and then let's call it a minecraft server and we also want to have a docker file okay so yeah we're gonna have that docker file here and let us have a build section and then a context will be dot so it's going to like get it from like it's going to use the docker file in the current directory but you could just use like build and just this dot but i'm just going to use context because like 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 because like in the future we are going to be actually like having some arguments to be passed to the docker file during the building time of the container yeah so we're gonna have this and then for ports we're going to have two ports and there's a reason why one port is going to be for the minecraft server itself and the other one's gonna be for archon now archon is basically like it's kind of like a service that a minecraft server runs by default like you don't need to download anything else you just go to the server.properties file and then just like check enable archon and basically like archon allows you to connect to your server's console using your terminal or something like that and then you can execute commands on your server so that's what we're going to be doing so yeah let's just specify 25565 and let it be mapped to 25565 on the server and then we're going to also have one for archon and archon uses 25575 if i recall correctly 25575 and let's give it a container name so container name is going to be let's call it minecraft server or you know what let's just have a dot env file and in here we can actually put everything so container name let's call it uh minecraft docker tutorial let's call it this and then we can use the uh environment variable to so have this here and now we also need something called volumes volumes will allow you to persist the data that is in your docker container now if you don't know already uh when you're running a docker container and your docker container might have some data and maybe it has a database or maybe it has some data that you want to save okay but the thing with docker is like if your container ever crashes or if it restarts or if you stop it or maybe even delete the container any data that exists in that container will be gone so with our minecraft server like if anytime we stop our server or maybe we delete the server we don't want all of the data to be gone that's why we're going to be using volumes and docker volumes allows us to actually permanently store some data now let to create a volume we need to first have this volume section and then we specify a directory i want to call this directory server data and then we're gonna have 
this mapped to slash server in the docker container so in the docker container if you go to slash server you're going to have all of the content that exists in the server data directory in our uh, project directory so yeah that's basically what we're gonna do let me actually move this up here great so now we need to actually specify this volume the volume that we have created here so for the server data and yeah we just keep it as it is now let's move on to the docker file so in our docker file we want to use a jre that is above you know jre 11 now this this server we are going to be making is going to be for minecraft java edition 1.17 and we're going to be using a paper server so that's why like it doesn't support java 1.8 anymore the paper 1.17 version requires at least java 11 but it's always best to use the latest version of java and that's why we're going to be using java 16. so let's import from adopt open jdk and this is going to be 16 jre this is going to be like the jre 16 and we want to go to slash server directory since our all of our data is going to be stored in slash server we're going to set that as our work directory and then we want to actually like this is going to be our entry point so cmd we're going to echo server uh docker minecraft server is starting slash n for breaking a line and then we do and and so we do this first and then we execute the server file so right now we don't have a server jar file but we're going to download one and we're going to put it in our volume so that uh whenever the container starts it can access those files like that server jar file so xms we can just specify like amount of ram here now i want to use an environment variable for the amount of ram but right now let's just use something like xmx1g and then we can have a jar and that is going to and then we're going to have the name of our server file so for now i'm just going to download a paper mc server so let me go to the download section and i'm going to leave the link in the description below now the reason why i choose paper over spigot or the vanilla minecraft jar file is because paper is really optimized it has all of buckets features like bucket or spigot like i use them exchangeably uh so like it has all of spigot's features but it's also very optimized it's more optimized i can handle more like server members than a spigot and like it, it like it's just better than spigot so like it's always best to download the latest build it goes through tons of tests so they're like less bugs now you can just download this one but i already have one so i'm just gonna copy that in the directory okay so basically uh before i actually copy this we need to create a directory that represents our volume so the directory is going to be server data so let's create a directory called server data now we can paste the jar file here this is the a paper 1.17 jar file that i just downloaded from here i actually didn't copy it i actually lost it i just copied it from my downloads directory so anyways we have this in here this is our jar file so in our docker file we can do something like paper 1.17 jar so yeah we can actually test this out now so we can do docker compose up and now this will start running our minecraft server okay so an oopsie i did there is that uh volume names must always start with a dot so like the directory for the volumes must start with a dot here so that was my bad so instead of server data i just renamed this to dot server data and then i pasted the uh, uh the paper jar file there and then in my volumes i just put dot server data and the name of the volume is going to be the same okay it just specifies what volume this corresponds to and we're gonna have the same thing here so we can rebuild this and now let's see if the server runs or not and voila this is running so uh since this is paper this is actually going to download the vanilla jar file and it's gonna take a while so yeah i'm gonna be right back after this has downloaded 
Right, so as you can see, when the server was trying to run, it says you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. Now, as I've said, the container has actually stopped. It has ex ex exited with code zero. But you see, we still have the server data here and it's not deleted. This is what a volume does in Docker. So we can go to the EULA and then set this to true uh, in small caps. Okay, so we have this. Also, I want to refactor some stuff here. So instead of just arbitrarily specifying the amount of RAM I want uh, for the server to use, I can just have an environment variable that does this. So over here, I can just say something like RAM amount equals to, I can just have one G here. One G is like for one gigabyte here. So I can specify that. And in our Docker Compose, in our build, this is why I used context here instead of just using build dot. We want to have something like args. So we want to pass some arguments to the Docker file. And then we can we want to have something like RAM amount. And that's going to be our environment variable called RAM amount. Okay. So this is going to be like this environment variable here. So we can save this. And then in our Docker file, we can have something like arg RAM amount. And then we can have an environment variable that takes that argument and stores it. So RAM amount. And now we can just specify this argument. Instead of putting this here, I can just put this value here. It's kind of like, you know, embed str embedded strings in JavaScript. You put a dollar sign and then you can put some variables here. And we can save this here. That way we can actually specify what we have. Let's also actually do this for the... Uh, server file ah no that's not required just gonna be a waste of time anyways we have this and yeah let's just run this here that's going to start building this server and this time it won't take as long as that as it did for the first time Right, so the server has started. Now we can go to Minecraft and we can use localhost since this is actually exposing port 25565 and that is Minecraft's default port. You can click join server and this is now going to log in. And it says that I have joined the server and boom, there's me over here. So this is like the tag that I use, but still like. We can now walk around at the server and do stuff and yeah that's basically how you make a micro server but now the issue that arises here is how to access the console example i want op but i don't have permission so i need to go to the server console and i need to like type some command here so op my username but uh that's not possible here because it's running on like docker and you can't access the standard input now that's where archon comes in now as i've said before archon allows you to remotely connect to your server's console and then execute commands and stuff from there so we can enable archon really really easily and for now let's just stop our server so we can just press ctrl c but for minecraft servers i don't recommend pressing ctrl c but since we still have not configured Archon yet, we need to press Ctrl C to stop it for the first time. And this is going to take a while since Minecraft doesn't actually, you know, usually let Docker like stop it. But once we have Archon, we can just run the stop command from Archon shell. And that's going to remotely trigger a signet, or a signet for this microserver. And that's just going to stop it. So we can go here. And then let me just search for Archon. So Archon port is going to be 255575. And then enable Archon. We need to set this to true. And then for Archon password, I'm going to do uh, 12345. How about that? And now to run this again, I don't need to rebuild this. Because any changes made in a volume, they don't need to be like, you know, the container does not require to be rebuilt again. Because this is like... This is not any source code that we are updating. This is just something, some data in the volume. And Docker has access to the volume every time it runs. So no need to rebuild it again. We can just 
do your Docker Compose up and it's gonna start the server again. And in a second, you're gonna see that it says starting Archon at this port. As you can see, it's, it's saying that Archon running on the a host name and then the port. Now the thing is, we have the Archon server running, but how do you access it? Well, there is an open source project called NC Archon, and you can use this. So this is like an Archon client, a console based Archon client, and you can use this to connect to your server. Now you can go to the latest release and then download this. Now I am on Windows, so I have already installed this, but if you're on Linux, you can like if you're Linux on Windows, you can just go and download this. But for Mac, I'm not sure. Like, like it has the source code here. You can just download CMake and then like just compile it yourself because there aren't pre-made binaries for Mac. But yeah, I have MC Archon installed already. So I can turn on Alacrity, which is my default shell. And then I can type MC Archon and then the host name with a dash capital H and then I'm going to type the name of the host this is localhost server is being hosted on localhost if it was being hosted like on a remote place on a remote VPS or somewhere that has its own IP you just put that over here and then for the password so this is the password uh, with a small p you type in the archon password that you have over here one two three four five and it's going to say logged in and as you can see over here it says thread archon client and then my local ip has started so that means like the server now recognizes that this archon user has connected to the server so we can go to localhost and we can log in to the server and we can actually like put ourselves as op or maybe do anything with Archon here since it gives us like complete access to the shell. So over here in Archon, I can type op and then my username. And if I hit enter here, it says that I have been made a server operator and that's by Archon. Now I can also run any other command, for example, list, it shows the you number of users online and then I can also set my game mode game mode creative and then my username and as you can see my game is in creative okay so yeah this is why I love Archon and it's really really like it's it's a really good thing thing to use with your server now as I've said before now maybe you want to stop your Minecraft server and instead of pressing Control C and letting just a Docker kill it you can just have Archon run the stop command and that, that's just gonna gracefully stop this Minecraft server. So you can go to Archon and then we can just type stop here and that's going to stop the server. As you can see in Docker, it automatically starts to stop and it says that Minecraft Docker tutorial or the name of their container has exited with code zero. So this is how you make a, um, a Minecraft server using docker now if you want to add plugins to your server you can just go to your plugins directory over here in your uh, volumes and then you can paste in your plugin and maybe even configure it while the server is running and then you can just run the reload command to reload all of your plugin configuration so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video and if it was helpful please be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video it really helps me out a lot and i put a lot of effort and work into this video so anyways I'm going to see you guys next time.